yeah hello everyone welcome everyone so we'll in this lecture we'll consider uh, republic we'll cover the topic republic of india what is constitution or the basics of it huh. okay so we'll understand uh, what exactly is the constitution and uh, what comes under the republic of india cu currently that will be an overview of this thing later in the coming lectures uh, we'll cover in depth okay so uh moving ahead uh we'll try to understand what exactly is india okay what exactly is india so whenever we have to define the uh, country india we have to tell india is nothing but a union of states what is that a union of states okay and what kind of union of states uh, which is a sovereign socialist will uh, will understand these terms sovereign socialist secular democratic republic one by one in the coming lectures uh, right now just uh, for the sake of uh, uh, understanding just the sake of grasping the knowledge consider it and remember it okay so india is nothing but a union of a states which is sovereign socialist secular democratic and republic okay with with when we tell with a with a parliamentary system of government it means there is a parliament where people are being chosen as a representative where the people comes as a representative of a group of public and they make laws implement laws and multiple kinds of work uh, they used to do governance related works uh, administration related work they used to do within the parliament so with a parliament parliamentary system of government okay so this is uh, whenever we have to explain what is india india a union of states which is a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic with a parliamentary system of government okay now the republic this republic is governed in terms of constitution so what whatever things uh, whatever this state uh, whatever this state a state means like currently i'm telling referring to india so whatever this is being ruled it is being governed under the terms of the constitution okay so this republic this republic means what this republic india okay this republic india is governed in terms of constitution okay which has been adopted by the constituent assembly remember this is very important now whatever i'm telling you this is a key term and you don't have to read all the stories and all so what are the depth thing is there we'll consider in the next uh, in the coming lectures just now just grasp as a uh, knowledge for it okay so the which is in terms of the constitution and which was adopted by the constituent assembly okay which has been adopted by the constituent assembly and when it was adopted it was adopted on 26 november 1949 okay 26 november 1949 and this came into force this came into force came into force on 26 january 1950 so that's why uh, the, you have seen several memes also where um, where the students are being asked uh, what is republic day what is independence day so here we have to focus what exactly is republic day say so republic day we celebrate on 26 january uh, every year why because our whatever the uh, whatever the constituent assembly adopted the constitution it came into force it came into work on 26 january 1950 and when it was adopted when it was uh, 
uh, adopted by the constituent assembly it was 26 november 1949 now uh, just for sake of uh, like how you will re remember these two dates just uh, just think that it is a uh, uh, 26 january and on 26 november both date uh, it is both dates are 26 26 and the year is one year behind it so 1950 we uh, we got a republic we celebrate uh, republic day from 1950 and in 1949 uh, constituent assembly or, or during that period uh, adopted that uh, constitution okay so yes so these are the two key points for it now the second important point no, another important point the constitution which envisages parliamentary form of government in federal structure with unitary features and the president of the india is constitution head of the executive of india uh, executive of this union okay so we tell it as a union of a states okay so this constitution let me okay so this constitution let me put my power okay yeah so So this constitution in which as parliamentary form of government is federal in the structure. What is federal and what is union? Federal in the structure is in the, it means like states are in it states are also involved in taking decision. Okay. So we have uh, when we when we uh, there are certain rules and uh, or laws when we implement we have to take uh, votes from the state as well so it means states are also involved that's why we tell federal in structure also but india is not considered uh, not uh, called as a federal uh, state also uh, in either federal state and either central uh, neither un uh, not union so why it is so we'll see in the in the coming lecture okay so constitution which envisages parliamentary parliamentary form of government is what it is in federal federal in structure it is just remember this term it is very important thing it is parliamentary form of government which is federal in structure okay and union features unitary features okay uh, and should not be there with unitary features okay so we'll consider so india uh, which have a constitution has it is a parliamentary form of government which is federal in structure with unitary features okay now who heads it who heads it the president of india the president of india is the constitutional head of executive of the union is the constitutional head of whom of the executive of the union okay what union what does it mean executive of the union so whatever the law will be passed the ultimate signed signature what will be required the last signature will be required by the president of india so that's why it is uh, president of india is considered as the constitutional head of executive of the in india so we'll see uh, whether this pa power decide with the president only or not no actually the power uh, resides with the uh, this council of ministers who are being elected uh, that works under the uh, that is headed by the prime minister okay so now uh, will go through that as well so the article 74 with the article 74 uh, clause 1 of the constitution provides that there shall be a council of ministers with prime minister as the head to aid and advise the president who shall exercise office who shall in exercise of his functions act in accordance with such advice okay so what does this statement mean so by the article 74 from article 74 uh, this power has been given 
this power having is uh, that is present under the constitution article 24 of the constitution it provides that there shall be a what there shall be a there shall be a council of ministers council of ministers okay there shall be council of ministers with prime minister as its head as prime minister as its head okay so prime minister will be the head of the council of ministers who what is the work what is the work prime minister will be the head to what to aid and advise the president understand why he is so what is there what is the work of the council of ministers council of ministers with the pm will be the head like pm will be the head of this council of ministers who that will aid and advise it will advise the president of india to act as the function to exercise any function uh, as per the advice of this uh, prime minister okay so the real executive power thus vest under the council of ministers with the prime minister as its head okay so the real power is under whom real executive power real executive power lies under whom council of ministers and pm okay because why uh, president is known as the head uh, head of the union uh, ultimate si signature is required of the president but he will work under whom he will work under the council of ministers and the prime minister whatever the prime minister or council of minister will uh, advise him suggest him that he has to do okay so there are process for it we'll see in the coming slide but currently we have to understand the overview picture of it okay so the important point that we have to take a note of it that it comes this power this power comes under from the article 74 clause 1 okay the, this is very important thing that can come under the uh, objective types of question okay so now the council of ministers that is collectively responsible to the house of people uh, that is known as uh, Lok Sabha similarly when we consider so whatever the story that we have said uh, we uh, con uh, currently uh, I have told you that is with respect to the central government that is respect to the central government now when we compare with the state government similar picture is there similar picture is there here in the central government what is told you that is president will be the executive head and uh, he will work under the uh, as per the aid and advice of the council of ministers and the prime minister what they will advise as per that president will work similarly in the state uh, just replace this term president from the governor okay and yes governor is uh, 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 reports to central government only but just now sake of the thing uh, instead of the governor and uh, governor will work as per the aid and advice of the council of ministers and the uh, sorry uh, chief minister of the state okay so just re uh, just copy paste the thing for the central and the state okay so the governor is the head of executive uh, but it is the council of ministers with the chief minister as, as its head in whom the real executive power vest okay the council of minister of a state is collectively responsible to the legislative assembly of the state and the uh, for the central thing it is a lok sabha okay it is the uh, lok sabha that is known as the house of people and here it is known as the legislative assembly of the state okay now the constitution distributes legislative power between parliament and the state legislature and provide for vesting the residual power in the parliament so what happened uh, uh, that we are going to study that there are certain powers uh, that is given to a state like there are certain power that is given only to a state like you can uh, make a law related to a state uh, by the st the certain laws can be made by the state only go uh, central government can't interfere into it so that parliament has distributed already distributed okay so there are certain laws that can be uh, taken care by uh, only state and there are certain laws that are taken care by the central 
okay like agriculture related things should be taken care of by the state only so that's why uh, farmer bills when it was introduced so there was a back uh, backlash uh, uh, on that thing that why the central government is interfering with it okay similarly there are certain uh, laws that can only be made by the central government where the state government can't uh, interfere with it okay related to tax and all okay now there are certain things also where state and central government both will work so that thing we will be uh, studying later okay so just for overall picture i have told you this so the constitution distributes legislative power between parliament and the state legislature provide for the vesting of residual power in the parliament okay and the power to amend the constitution also vest with the parliament only no state themselves can amend the constitution itself it is the parliament it is the parliament itself that can change the power so the parliament is headed by whom Com parliament is headed by the elected members who comes and sit into the state so yes but it should be done by the alone by the parliament not by the uh, uh, state uh, legislative assembly okay the constitution has provision for independence of judiciary and one more important thing who are independent uh, like who are completely independent from any interference uh, politically uh, we have uh, we, we can see in the news uh, that a, a central government is interfering with that agency like election commission uh, or public service commission or or uh, sorry not public service commission by the ju uh, uh, central government is always interfering with the judiciary and uh, and election commission we can we can see in the news but uh, as per the constitution they are independent so what are the provisions that makes uh, 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 independent so uh, these are the key terms uh, one is judiciary who are independent one is judiciary another is comptroller and auditor general third public service commission and fourth will be chief election commission okay so uh, judiciary you know uh, and chief election commission you know two uh, regarding these two things uh, what are these two things uh, i will tell you that uh, this uh, this uh, this public service commission is related to uh, like uh, conducting test and also this uh, it is a central administration which is ac accountable for organizing and managing the exams that are held for jobs under different categories uh, like if you consider that is a uh, UPSC uh, so most famous exam that is conducted by the UPSC so this public service commission is generally uh, given a task to organize and manage the exams uh, for uh, getting uh, for uh, heading any job uh, selection for the candidate for the particular available uh, jobs uh, in the categories okay and now uh, this uh, Comptroller and Auditor General, uh, what is the duty of it? Their duty is to audit all the expenditure from the consolidated uh, consolidated fund from the uh, of the India of each state and each union territory having a legislative assembly. So that is their task. Like, like, uh, it is like uh, they audit the task, like uh, how in your uh, personal office also there will be a finance team that who used to audit the expenditure by your project managers and all. So in the in the similar in the similar fashion, uh, we have a comptroller and auditor general uh, who works for this thing and uh, expenditure related to consolidated fund uh, of India, uh, state and union territories and all. Okay, so what is consolidated fund and all? So we'll see later. But uh, uh, this is key picture of it to understand it. So okay, so these four. Uh, 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 like provisions uh, by the uh, like constitution has made uh, provisions for these four sections to be a independent one one is judiciary another is comptroller and auditor general third is public service commission chief election commission nobody can interfere where in the work of these uh, four uh, section okay so this will conclude for the uh, lecture 2 uh, we will continue with the lecture uh, 3 as well uh, uh, quickly